Hey everybody, welcome to Neil Talks. My name's Neil and it's time to talk the season one finale of The Sandman. This show has been so much fun, such a pleasantly worry-free surprise for a lifelong fan like myself. I am a very mixed emotions now that we're here at the final episode of the season. Ultimately, I am incredibly happy, so thrilled that the show has been been a such a such an interesting fun and new retelling of the original story while still providing so much nostalgia as i watch with how much of the original is still in this work it's been so much fun but more importantly i'm i'm loving how much this show has clicked the cast is the casting has been amazing the performances are so strong the the visuals that this show has provided through the first nine episodes have been mind-blowing and the the story is translating it it is appealing to a bigger audience than the comics ever found and i i'm just so grateful that this seems to have hit its mark in no small part because that means we're probably going to get more seasons and that those future seasons we might just get the entire comic book run in television form. How amazing would that be if we can get all 75 amazing issues of this comic ultimately on screen? That would be a fan's dream come true, and uh, I am crossing my fingers. I know it's been getting a, a really strong audience on Netflix, and I hope Netflix sees that for what it is and continues to make this great show and to continue to promote it and um, more people i've i've always been one of these people who've been evangelizing the sandman you have to read this even if you're not a fan of comics check this out it's a work of literature it's such great storytelling read it read it read it and some people will do but a lot of people don't because of the stigma of comic books that unfortunately last even until now you know, I would never be able to convince my parents to read a comic book, but I can tell them to watch a TV show. They listen to my recommendations about TV. And so maybe, just maybe, I can convince them that watching The Sandman would be worth their time. And man, I think there's a lot of people like that who will give a TV show a shot um, and discover a story that they never thought they'd love that really resonates with them, that hits them in the heart and in the mind and inspires them and uh, creates new fans. So that's really my big hope for this show. But my hope for this episode is let's tie up the Doll's House storyline with Gusto. Let's get that final um, confrontation between the Corinthian and Dream that we've been setting up since the opening scenes of, first, of the first episode. And let's see what we set up for season two, because season two could be a doozy if they stick with the stories I think they're going to stick with. In any case, man, let's jump into it, guys. There's no more reason for me to talk other than that's the name of the channel. This is episode 10, the season finale of season one, and it's called Lost Hearts. Uh-oh. Okay, that's Funland's blood. I just killed that man. I just saved your life. From whom? From Morpheus. It does seem that Morpheus has to kill the Vortex. He has to kill Rose. At least that's what Gilbert and Lucien think. You're one of the missing nightmares. And you are the Vortex. The minute you fall asleep and start bringing the walls down between people's dreams, he's gonna kill you. But if someone protected you, kept him from killing you, you'd become the center of the dream. And I would be free. I'm taking Jed. We're going home. Okay. But obviously it's not safe for you to be wandering around the hotel. I'll come back in an hour. I'll knock. If you want, you can let me in. If not, I'll go away. He's so seemingly easygoing. It's frightening. <laughs> Dreams do come true. <laughs> An inspiration to us all. The Corinthian. <laughs> He's such a fanboy. Because you are special people. Make them feel special. We are the American dreamers. We are entrepreneurs in an expanding field. 
Oh, just chills, man. Holbrook's so I good. see you. I see you for who you truly are. And see yourselves as I do. Gladiators. Explorers. We are hunters. Mm -hmm. And kings of the night. Oh, chills. Jerry? So much. So many chills. You disappoint me, Corinthian. I have done my best to be what you made me. You were my masterpiece. A dark mirror made to reflect everything humanity will not confront. That's what I am. Infecting others with your joy of death. But what have you given them? Nothing. Oh, you don't think dreams can die? Let's find out. Enough. Why is he not? That was unexpected to him. She's taking your place at the center of the dreaming. And now they're all dreaming the same dream. A dream that I inspired. No, what's up? Then she is not beyond my reach. Oh, I think she is. Now that she knows you're planning to kill her. So this is, she's still dreaming. This is, oh, I, lo I love how disorienting it all is. This is your dream. It's his dream. For your world. Then let's make it yours. Whatever you want, Rose. A blank canvas. Your world. Everything. And everyone will die. Don't believe him, Rosie. I'm trying to keep you alive here. I'm trying to keep your world alive. You have to choose Enough. one, Miss Rose. I will find my own way. In the meantime, the walls go back up. Thanks to you two, I'm wide awake. Okay. She's a lucid vortex. And you don't care about humanity. You only care about yourself and your realm and your rules. You're right. This was my fault, not yours. But I created you poorly then. So I must uncreate you now. I am only sorry I won't be here to see Rose Walker do the same to you. <laughs> Finally getting the conclusion to that scene in Berlin in 1916 in the pilot. I love the little Corinthian skull. What a great little prop. <laughs> I kind of want one. And if, some, if Warner Brothers is smart, they're selling them. The dream is over. <laughs> that you shall know exactly how craven and monstrous you are. That you shall feel the pain of those you have slaughtered. I'm calling to confess to a crime. And the grief oh, wow. of those that mourn them still carry that pain and grief and guilt yeah. with you until the end of time. Okay. So now what? Is so mom still sick? Or... I'm sorry, Jetty. Yeah. She, she doesn't even she passed know. away a few months ago. Guess who's in the car with me? I don't want you to panic. The baby's coming. <laughs> Already. We're taking good care of her Rose. <laughs> and Chantal and Zelda are on the way. So are we. <laughs> How is she? Is she okay? So did you know she was pregnant? Of course she knew. You did know, didn't you? <laughs> Everyone, this is Jed. Jed. Oh, <laughs> don't don't be creeped out or anything, Jed. Spider? It used to be. Uh, so she's still only three centimeters. Uh, the doctor's with her now. Oh, that um nurse told you that? Yeah, yeah, she's really nice. Yeah, she looks really nice. Oh, <laughs> trouble in Ken and Barbie in Dreamland. Is there anyone we should call? Lightest family? Or the baby's daddy? Whoever it is. I. You don't have to tell us. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> He said if he doesn't kill me, the whole world will die. If you have the power to destroy the world, then you have the power to destroy him. You have to find him and end this. Yeah. Light is trying to turn her into a villain, at least in Dream's story, but... Oh. Wherever 
more Hal number. Whatever we do, we're gonna go through it together. Oh, Hal and Hal. Oh, knocking down walls. And the skipper said to the mate, mate, tell me a story. And this is the story he told. Chantal? Tell me a story. He's stuck in the loop. It was a dark and stormy night. And the skipper said to the mate, mate, tell me a story. Here, let me. And this is the story he told. It was in September of the year 1811. <laughs> the little boy who jumped out as soon as it had stopped. Looked I sent strangeness in the air. What manner of thing, Martin Tenbones? The cuckoo? Colonel Knowledge? Colonel Knowledge. Oh. <laughs> Ken? Oh, shit. <laughs> Come, Martin Tenbones, we must away. <sighs> what are you all doing here? Dreams are colliding. Fix it, Rose. Oh, dear. It's just a dream. You just have to wake up right now. Save me! Oh, oh. Rose, I'll save you. <laughs> oh, Jen! 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 Just a Jen! dream blender. They're asleep in their bed, but they're not safe. No one is. Not until the Vortex is dead. Do you sacrifice yourself to save the world? I mean, it sucks, but you kind of have to, right? I'm looking for a book. <laughs> I want to read about my unlived life. Your Unity Kincaid. Sir! Gilbert? What are you doing here? I, I left my post here to experience life as a human being, a life which I humbly offer in exchange for yours. But it is time you took up your appointed position once more. Ah, <laughs> my dear, Fiddler's Green is not a who, it is a where. <laughs> I was not a person, I was a place. Visit me, walk in my meadows and my green glades, rest beneath my trees. Stephen frickin' Fry, man. Rose Walker. It was a privilege being human with you. <laughs> wow. Oh, they did that really beautifully. Let's see Fiddler's Screen come to life. Responsibilities, and this is one of mine. I am sorry. My lord, stop! I was meant to be the vortex of this age. I don't understand. Yeah, you're not very bright, are you? <laughs> Give me whatever it is that makes you the vortex. died a long time ago, Rose. But if I had, I would never have met my golden eyed man. And we would never have had our beautiful baby girl, and you would not have been born. Wait, golden eyes. The father of your child had golden eyes. I've never seen anything like them. Oh. I have. So Rose's great grandfather is desire it's a boy he's really strong have you decided on a name did you ever notice how people only ever use your name when you're in trouble rose <laughs> so as long as you don't have a name you can't get in any trouble <laughs> prepare yourself he's pretty cute oh we are ready uh, it's uh, one at a time what oh come babe babe it was just a dream <laughs> and now I'm thinking, what if I sell the house and move back? We'll buy the house. <laughs> okay. Her sigil is a heart. My sweet dream, this is a surprise. I'm coming through. You are. <laughs> but of course. You know you're always welcome in my chambers. 
straight from the comic. The outfit and everything. Was I really that obvious? No. You covered your tracks remarkably well. What did you truly intend? That I should spill family blood? With all that would entail? It almost worked. We do not manipulate them. If anything, they manipulate us. Mess with me or mine again and I shall forget you are family. Do you believe yourself strong enough to stand against me? Against death? Against destiny? <laughs> no. Remember that next time you are inspired to interfere in my affairs. Next time. I'll drop the lab. <laughs> oh, they're not done yet, are they? These landscapes are dreamlike. A new book appeared in the library this morning, written by Rose Walker. You may take issue with the depiction of the king in the story, but <laughs> I loved it. It's really good. Come eat. Dinner's here. Oh, Cal and her New York friend ended up together. That's cute. I am finishing a dream. I'll leave you to it then. Is it going to be Galt? It's got Galt's underlying colors. You not wish to say hello? It's Galt. I had no right returning here after over a century expecting everything to be just as I'd left it. Lucienne tried to tell me that. So did you. Thank you, sir. All right. Look at dream growing, maturing. Would you mind taking care of things while I work? With pleasure. So if we don't get a season two, we're tying it up. But oh, we're going back to hell. Nada, Lucifer. There's Mazakin. What? What are we gonna? touch on here. Your Majesty. Lord Azazel would like a word. I will be brief, Your Majesty. <laughs> You've stopped fighting each other long enough to assemble. We have against your enemy. Our enemy. Dream of the Endless. You wish to invade the dreaming. If you command it. And then perhaps the waking world. The generals demand action. Do they? Then I shall act. I think we're setting up seasons of Something season Something that business. I have never done before. You're absolutely setting Something it up. Something that will make God absolutely livid and bring Morpheus to his knees. <laughs> we absolutely are setting up Season of Mists. Are we actually gonna kick that off? No. Okay. Whew! I thought we were like, wow. I, I'm super happy. It works as a standalone season. We had a great arc, primarily about Dream's growth, under, coming to the realization that he doesn't exist, that people's dreams don't exist because of him, but vice versa. He exists because humans dream. We're, we're going to continue to see him become more human, for lack of a better way of describing it. I mean, obviously, he's not human, but he's going to understand people so much more as we progress. He's already made great strides just in these 10 episodes, more than he did in the comic, that's for sure. But I love, I, I forget which episode I, I, I said it in the reaction to, but I love, despite all of the, the creepiness and the horror and the dark fantasy, that's so um, such a part of the Sandman at its heart. It's it's optimistic, it's compassionate, it's warm. There there's so many great, positive, happy beats in this story. 
just just seeing people get a happy ending and it's not about grandiose dreams coming true it's about being reunited with family and maybe finding a new love and bonding with your friends and continuing to live you you, you feel for unity that she never truly lived at all i mean she she had the first 12 years of her life and then she was asleep for 106 and she woke up a year ago and then she died to save her great granddaughter but the greater reveal here is who who raped her when she was asleep and it wasn't just some random hospital orderly or something like that it was this man with golden eyes it was desire and desire has this plot to make to punish dream to and, and and that was all spelled out when dream confronted desire at the very end here that if he had spilled family blood there are there are there are codes to follow as an endless and one of them clearly you can't spill family blood and if he had killed rose because she's the one of desire's descendants now then that would have clearly led to a lot of turmoil within the endless maybe dream who, who knows we can imagine what that punishment might entail but it wouldn't be good and that's desire's desire to, to punish dream and we don't know why exactly we don't know if there was a something in their past that that prompted all of this or whether it's just their nature or or what but but i love that we're setting desire up as maybe the through line antagonist through the series now we had, we had the corinthian all this season but the corinthian has been unmade i love that little skull by the way well, seriously somebody needs to make that and sell it online because probably it's probably on etsy i'll, I'll check it out but uh <laughs> But yeah, the, the Corinthian is done as the, the villain of the season, the big bad of the season. But but the but desire because of her endless of their endless nature is a more um, equal a villain, more equal in, in stature and power to dream and a fairer fight, if you will. So, what is their next plan? And what is Lucifer's plan? In my mind, they are setting up um, season of mists which is another Sandman arc. Since we're done with Sandman content for the moment, I highly recommend, if you love the TV show, if you love what Netflix has done here, track down a couple of the trade paperbacks. Maybe track down one of the first two, either Preludes and Nocturnes or The Doll's House or both, fine, and, and read to compare, to see how, how they're the same and how they're different. But I don't think there's any harm in going ahead with the story either so by all means check out my, my personal favorites uh favorite arcs are season of mists love brief lives the kindly ones is so so good but what i would also recommend is checking out some of the trade paperbacks that collect the one-off issues there are issues that aren't part of the the greater story arc at least they aren't part of a like an eight episode arc an eight issue arc anything like that they are part of the greater story but they're standalone stories single issues and they're collected and and honestly those are some of gaiman's very best stories in the sandman arc so dream country is a great anthology for those but you honestly can't go wrong pick up any of the trade paperbacks but uh you know, there's nothing wrong with reading them in order, in order, getting them all and reading them in order either. I know I'll be I'll I'll be rereading my entire collection before season two comes along. This has reignited my passion for this series. Like I when I was back in college, back in my twenties, I used to be reading Sandman a ton, and honestly, it's been a while since I read. The story stays in your mind; it, it, it remains fresh. I've listened to the uh, the, for the two volumes of the audio book, which take you to about issue forty, maybe in the, in the interim. But I'm going to go back to the books. I want to go back to the books and, and fall back into that world again because it's such a rich 
environment for story. Um, it's just such a comfortable, comforting, inspiring place to go and visit. Um, I love that Rose is a writer. I love that we have storytellers within this story and uh, never forget that the Sandman ultimately is a boat story. I don't know how long we're going to have to wait for season two, guys, but you better believe I'll be there the day it drops. Cannot wait. It's going to be a blast. Thank you guys so much for spending a little time with me here today on Neil Talks. I'd love to hear your thoughts and comments about this episode and the whole series. And uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. If you came to the channel for my Sandman content, check out some of my other shows. I do some pretty cool stuff here on the channel. I'm very proud of all of it. And until next time, everybody, take care, stay healthy. We'll see you soon. Cheers.